Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is my review of Control. Uh, Control was a game that I initially had zero interest in because uh, I had seen a lot of previews for Quantum Break. That was Remedy's uh, first game that caught my eye on Xbox launch, and it just looked like a generic third-person shooter with, oh, you have some time-bending powers, but they're not actually that interesting. And um, I never played Alan Wake, but once again, I didn't really find the whole backstory or setup of Alan Wake very interesting. As soon as I saw trailers for Control, I felt like it was just Quantum Break light, or Quantum Break, I don't know, with some weird sci-fi element, even, even more sci-fi elements. But after watching a couple reviews and seeing some of the interesting level design and subject matter and visuals, my interest was immediately piqued. It's not a game that I would have purchased, you know, unless I saw it on sale, um, and I was really looking to rent it. So uh, I ended up uh, getting a temporary free trial Gamefly membership uh, for Doom Eternal. But it turns out they didn't have any copies of Doom Eternal left, so I ended up getting Control because I had a chance to finally play it. Uh, in Control, you play as Jesse Faden. That's the redhead you see on the box. Um, she has a sort of interesting backstory, but for the most part, when she shows up at the beginning of the game, she's just basically a normal person. And she has stumbled upon, almost through accident, almost by accident, but also through guidance of this kind of uh, spiritual voice within her, she's discovered the FBC, the Federal Bureau of Control. It's a building very sort of nondescript, large skyscraper-style building in the middle of uh, downtown Manhattan. But no one else on the sidewalk seems to have any idea that it's there. So she stumbles in there and she finds the place uh, sort of eerily quiet and almost abandoned. Um, in the beginning of the game, you're just sort of walking through the halls and you see, uh, like, basically a lifeless um, office building. And it's very strange, too, because it's clear that the game takes place in modern day, but all of the architecture and the technology and everything looks like something out of the 1960s. And it's got this really great sort of height of the 60s, height of the space race slash Cold War office look and feel. You know, your classic sort of CIA government building or like your NASA government building. Um, and as you're walking through the halls, you see all these bodies just suspended in the air, and you have no idea what's going on. When you finally make your way to the director's office, because this voice in your head keeps telling you to do so, you find he has killed himself in the confines of an o his own office, and you see uh, a gun lying next to him. As soon as you pick up the gun, shit. something crazy happens, and now you have officially become shit, the new shit. director of the FBC. Jesse later finds that... The FBC is in charge of uh, containing and and protecting people, you know, the, the general populace, uh, from these sort of interdimensional anomalies that usually manifest in specific places or uh, within specific objects. Now, Jesse was there to find her brother because when they were young, they experienced one of these sort of interdimensional cross-sections uh, in their, their hometown and a lot of bad things happened and uh, as a result her brother was actually abducted by the FBC and Jesse just sort of narrowly escapes and after years and years of searching she's finally found the FBC but after becoming director she makes contact with uh, many of the employees and the department heads within the building who tell her that the projector, there's this uh, slide projector that she and her brother found when they were little, is one of these objects that has this sort of interdimensional uh, of possession about it, and that it actually can create portals to another dimension, and that when they used it recently, okay. this uh, paranormal entity, paranormal essence came through called the Hiss, and the Hiss has been uh, possessing the security forces and employees of the FBC. So it's Jesse's job to go through the FBC and liberate different sectors because she has this sort of 
interdimensional psycho control or psychic control over these uh, what are called control points and she's actually able to sort of cleanse them of the energy from this enemy called the hiss so that's the game you're sort of opening up and retaking parts of this facility now the sidearm that Jesse has in the game is your main weapon and it is a, a sort of it's something from another you know parallel universe and it's a weapon that has unlimited ammo and can uh, transform itself into many different weapon types. You have a shotgun variant, you have a sort of sniper rifle variant, there's like a rocket launcher variant, um, and then your initial sort of revolver uh, style variant at the beginning. And, you know, whoever wields the sidearm becomes the head of the FBC. And so, Jesse is tasked with uh, containing and eradicating the Hiss uh, infestation and also trying to find her brother and uh, that's the basic setup for the plot of control it's kind of weird because it just throws you into the mix um, I really loved the aesthetic of the game it's got some of the most amazing visuals and really interesting um, architecture and level design that I've seen in a while in a video game um, there's these just sort of nonsensical large open areas in the building and the other interesting thing about the building is that it will actually shift so certain hallways will lead to certain places one day and then you'll come back a few hours later and they'll lead to totally different other places so the building itself is like an at an interdimensional crossroads and the FBC investigates paranormal phenomena uh, called AWEs which are like what happens to happen to Jesse's town and these are called altered world events and so these are these are sort of interdimensional crossroads or, or the crossroads of interdimensionality uh, affecting large areas spaces or towns and the FBC goes in to contain and deal with those uh, inter interdimensional threats and then you have OOPs which are called objects of power and these are specific objects that have paranormal behaviors or activities or reactions to the world around them and to people around them and uh, it's the FBC's job to find these wherever they exist throughout the world and acquire them and then put them in this large containment facility because they are more often than not very dangerous the interesting thing about some of these things though is they're not it's not always about pure danger sometimes uh, for example there's this hotel in Nevada where if you go into a certain room using a certain key, it will take you to many different places throughout time and space. Um, and there's nothing inherently dangerous about it, but it can lead to dangerous consequences. So the FBC likes to maintain tight control over the hotel. But they also use the hotel for you know, teleporting and transporting and security purposes um, down to some more kind of like horror-based uh, objects of power like a fridge that you have to maintain eye contact with at all times, you know, kind of like the, uh, the uh, what are they called, the watching angels from uh, Doctor Who. And if you don't, it'll devour you. Um, so at the beginning of the game, it has this real sort of heavy horror feel that I, I really loved. And it was incredibly intense and eerie and creepy. And I was actually kind of, spooked out but the beginning of the game and because I had seen some you know gameplay footage and stuff and I knew oh there's like a rubber ducky that will like I don't know like launch things at you or there's a fridge that'll eat you I was like wow I really want to see where this game goes um, the the general feel of the game is kind of like men in black meets the x-files because you know it's very men in blacky because there is a there is sort of like a comedy twist and sort of like a black humor twist to a lot of the stuff in the game that's very you know uh, characteristic of Remedy as a developer that those are the kind of games that they do I think even Alan Wake had bits of humor and stuff like that in it so um, it does have a bit of dark humor here and there and obviously it's a lot like Men in Black because it's a large government agency that is its sole purpose is to deal with instead of extraterrestrial events um, uh, deal with paranormal events and they operate in secrecy and all of this stuff and nobody knows about them um, and then it's again very much X Files because um, the interdimensionality of our own reality uh, 
that the FPC investigates and protects people from is kind of used as an explanation for a ton of paranormal events in like, you know, uh, the game Control tries to explain away things like ghosts and I think even vampires and stuff like that and aliens and abductions and disappearances and the Bermuda Triangle. So it's really just like a laundry list of like conspiracy theories that this game addresses and, and, and uh, provides explanations for based on the... Uh, the mission statement of the FBC. Um, there's a bit of a Lovecraftian vibe too, because it really is cosmic horror. The idea that they're, you know, beneath the uh, facade, the sort of surface veneer of reality exists, you know, untold, unspeakable horror um, from, you know, other dimensions, from things across time and space. And that's really what uh, most of the horror from. Uh, of this game is about so definitely has this sort of uh hp lovecraft meets x files meets uh uh men in black vibe to the whole thing um and like i said at the very beginning of the game it's it's very creepy and very mysterious although i have to say one of the things that sort of bugged me was because you start finding live human npcs most of them aren't freaked out by anything that's going on, it's just another day at the office for them. And a lot of the creepy imagery is, um, I think, subdued a little bit by the fact that the gameplay never devolves into anything that creepy. I mean, even when you're dealing with the fridge that eat, eats people, what that eventually just turns into is a boss fight with this giant worm monster in some void somewhere. And it's not really creepy, it's more, I don't know, action-packed? You know, I, I thought the idea that there was this possessed fridge was a lot creepier than the idea that it's being controlled by this interdimensional worm thing from the other side, and that all it does is in its own realm is just like shoot energy balls at you and try and step on you. So, and in addition to that, the, the combat is... There are a couple enemies in the game that are more horror-esque. They're, they're kind of zombie-like enemies, and they're, they're, their character models look a little bit... Uh, creepy but for the most part it's just a third person shooter um, and there's nothing really inherently creepy about uh, just fighting a bunch of dudes you know in security you know in, in full you know body armor with like machine guns and stuff like that it's more action-packed and thrilling but it's not creepy or scary so a lot of the horror and and spookiness of the game is completely undercut by the general gameplay the game is its creepiest when you are just walking around looking at stuff and investigating things and seeing all this sort of disturbing imagery of like innocent people just kind of like strung up like marionettes um completely just floating in midair unable to move unable to talk to you or react to you but they sort of like are whispering all these weird chants um I'm also realizing too the game is a lot more like fear, uh, but the, the thing that fear did well in terms of supporting its horror element was that in between intense combat, which was not scary at all and the game knew that, it had sections of um, isolation, loneliness, which were punctuated with a lot of paranormal events. You know, Alma would visit you and there would be a lot of spooky and horrific imagery, uh, or there'd be certain enemy types that, that you know, uh, creep around in the dark and stuff like that, or you'd have to be fighting these sort of, like, psychic monster things. Um, and so, the horror, you know, a lot of people say, well, the horror's not great in that game. True, but at least it was scary and horrifying in moments. I remember my first time playing it, I was creeped out through a lot of the game. Especially Fear Extraction Point, the whole bit in the hospital is just brilliant. Um... But this game is only creepy and scary at the beginning, and it the only thing that you feel when you're rocking... Because this disturbing imagery, they only take it so far, and so the only thing that you sort of feel later on in the game when you're walking around by yourself 
is just a sense of tension, but that's just because since they can spawn in enemies at any point, at any time, and it, it's seemingly at random, uh, that's it. You just don't know when the next fight is coming. Oh, also speaking of fear, the game is... It feels very much like fear when you get into combat, because like I said, you know, it's uh, paranormal, paranatural events, um, but then you're fighting sort of armed human soldiers with like submachine guns and stuff like that in, in an office complex uh, setting. And in addition to that, the world is absolutely chock full of physics items. I wouldn't call it a fully destructible world, but it really does a damn good job at giving you the illusion that it's a fully destructible world. And so if you're like in an in a office room, all right, the floor of an office, and there's a bunch of desks with papers and books all over them and typewriters and shit like that. And you got, start getting into a firefight, well, a lot of Jesse's... Because Jesse gains uh, paranatural abilities as well. That's what makes it sort of a remedy game. It's not just a shooter, you also have these paranatural abilities. When Jesse gains these abilities, a lot of them involve launching, you know, shit through the air. Or a lot of the shooting will cause you know, books and stuff to fly off shelves as the bullet goes through them and, and there'll be all these particle effects of like bits of paper coming down through the air, or bits of dust from concrete, there's lots of sparks, uh, there's lots of those little shock waves like in the matrix behind bullets, so it's really a visual feast whenever you get into combat. Some people have said it makes it hard to see what's going on in combat, true, that's true sometimes, but uh, more often than not, it just looks awesome, and it's very reminiscent of Fear, that sort of John Woo-style action where it just, like, tons of shit flying everywhere, lots of explosions, lots of physics objects flying off the shelves, and then, of course, you have your, your it's called a uh, fling or something like that. Uh, it's basically a gravity gun ability where you can grab any physics object and launch it at people, and this is uh, really fantastic because... You can go so far as to literally just rip chunks of concrete out of the floor and then launch, oh, it's called launch, and launch them at people um, and do devastating damage. Um, and I think if the objects are large enough, too, they act as a sort of shield. No, that's not true because Jesse always has them off to the side. So you can't use it like a shield like in um, Half-Life 2, but there is a separate power that allows Jesse to grab a bunch of physics objects and sort of encircle herself with them and they act as a shield. And so it's just great fun to, you know, like fling typewriters at people. Once you get further through the game and you upgrade that power, you can actually pick up like entire forklifts and like chunk them at like a group of soldiers down the hallway. It's really satisfying, fun combat. Uh, the shooting is really impactful too. Um, so the combination of just running around and, and shooting these really powerful weapons and, and, you know, ripping chunks of concrete out of the floor and flinging them, at, flinging them at people just makes you feel like a complete badass when everything is coming together. So the shooting is absolutely tons of fun and you have a number of abilities that you get throughout the game. Like I said, you have the launch ability. You have the ability to, once an enemy's health is low enough, you can actually possess them and they'll start fighting for you. Um, you have an ability to actually shield yourself. You pick up chunks of stuff, and it, like I said, it'll create this barrier to, to protect you. And these all use Jesse's energy. So in combat, you're constantly... So you have unlimited ammo, but each weapon has a cooldown period once you've run through your magazine supply before it'll just recharge. And so you're constantly having to worry about are you in cover, you know, how much ammo do you have left and how much energy do you have left because as soon as you run out of ammo that's probably a good time to start launching shit at people while your weapons recharge and then once that runs out it's probably a good time to get your weapons out again and start shooting um, and if you really get into the thick of it you may want to put up a kinetic barrier uh, to to shield yourself while you try and find some cover but you need to be careful you didn't use all your energy throwing stuff at people. There's also an ability where you can completely levitate. So you just press and hold jump and and Jesse will just levitate above the battlefield. And this is very useful as well because there are quite a few enemies who are not very good at fighting when you're floating above them. So you can use that to get to drop on people. You can also use it to sort of survey the battlefield. And when you get the grenade launcher at some point, you can use it to kind of, add, you know, have a give yourself a little bombing run before you go back down to the floor and go to cover. It also means that there's large sections in certain parts of the game where you're going to be doing a combination of platforming and combat, levitating between large sort of floating islands and 
taking on groups of enemies. There's also an ability called evade that just allows you to dodge, but it, co it comes at the cost of energy too. So, you know, if you need to dodge out of the way at the last second, once again, you need to be balancing, making sure you're not using up all of your energy pool on just throwing stuff at people. If you're getting close to the bottom, you may want to think, okay, am I taking a bunch of fire? Maybe I should dodge now, get back into cover, switch to weapons for a little bit. So combat becomes this constant balance of, of shooting, using abilities, moving between cover, knowing when to go out into the fray of battle and do some damage, knowing when to expose yourself a little bit and start launching tons of shit at people, um, and also picking the white, the, the white, the right weapon for the job. So the game will involve you uh, exploring the facility and um, much like my review for Journey to the Savage Planet, this game is very much sort of in that Metroidvania style where it's one sort of continuous map, but it slowly opens up the more abilities you have. There's places you can't get to without evade. Uh, there's places you can't get to without launch, or things that you can't do without launch. Um, you know, and in addition to that, you have to secure certain control points, you have to meet certain characters before you can gain access to different parts of the facility. So you'll likely have access to most of the facility through the elevator at the beginning of the game, but it's not advisable to go exploring outside of maybe some of the side quests you're given or the main objectives because you're going to be very underleveled. So another thing that is part of the progression system is you get all these powers, but you can upgrade things like how much of an energy pool you have. So if you're using launch a lot, you may want a much larger energy pool so that you can it's basically more ammo for your launch ability. In, in addition, you can increase the damage of the launch ability, which I would highly recommend. It makes a lot of the later fights uh, much, much easier. And it allows you to do things like pick up enemies. Um, so if an enemy's health is low, you can actually pick them up and throw them at their buddies, which is great fun. I mean, Half-Life 2 proved that. <laughs> pick up large objects, like I said, forklifts and stuff like that. You can also upgrade your health. Jesse has a pretty low health pool at the beginning of the game, so I would also recommend, if you're struggling with the combat, to go and do some of the health upgrades. The game is not fooling around when it comes to the difficulty, and there's no difficulty setting either. So one of the reasons it's so hard is you can't save wherever you want. It's a checkpoint-based save system, so you, you respawn at your most recent control point. This is usually fine for some encounters because let's say I go down the hall and there's a group of, you know, three heavy enemies and 15 normal bad guys. And I ended up killing one of the heavies and 10 of the bad guys. Well, typically what will happen is when I respawn, I come back and most of my progress for who I killed will remain. So the idea is that Jesse is just kind of resetting back at the original point, but the world, everything she's done in the world has remained the same. Right? This is not true for boss fights, and those are actually the most frustrating part of the game overall. There are also a couple of fights where they won't let you save your progress of what you did in the fight, you will just have to restart the fight over and over again. There was one that was really tough for me in particular, and I restarted it over and over and over again. Um, you can't take that many hits before you die, um, and the only way to heal is when you kill an enemy, they'll drop uh, health points, and you have to run towards them, and Jesse will suck them up. But this means if you're getting pinned down, it doesn't matter how many guards you're picking off from afar. Unless you get out of cover and rush the position, you're not going to get your health back. And so is there, there is this constant risk-reward to combat. I will say this, it is incredibly satisfying, it is incredibly tense, and it will keep you thinking on your feet. You need to, at the drop of a hat, switch to the right weapon, that's best for the job, maybe switch to one of your abilities, maybe put up your shield real quick, uh, maybe dash over to their position. There was one fight, so the thing I like about it is not only does it make you think on your feet, it makes you think about your tactics overall. There was one fight I had where there was no cover and they spawned three or four heavies in the middle of the arena and they were constantly pelting my position with grenades and there were so many of them that as soon as I dashed away from my point of cover or my my engagement point where I was trying to take on all the enemies, as soon as I dashed away from that to try and reassess the situation, there would already be grenades at my feet. And I was dying over and over and over again. And I thought, this game sucks, this is bullshit. But then when I realized, wait a minute, I just got the levitate ability. These are all grenade rounds and they don't detonate on impact. They have to be near me to blow up. And then I realized, oh, the grenade launcher heavies can't 
touch me if I'm floating in the air. So then I just went and levitated, and the fight was over in about 30 seconds. It was really that fast. So changing tactics in this game is crucial because even even with all the health upgrades, I had all the health upgrades in the game, Jesse still can't take that much punishment. And the other thing is, is there's a lot of cheap enemies in the game. There are two enemies in particular I absolutely hate. One is a enemy that levitates and puts up a shield around it and throws rocks at you. The rocks do devastating damage, even towards the end game with most of the health, or no, all of the health upgrades in the game. I got hit once by one of them and it dropped my health bar by 80%. And this was the very beginning of the fight too, and I knew I was screwed. And when you try and do damage to them, you have to drop their shield, but they can recharge it very quickly. So you have to like constantly pelt their position to get any sort of progress. Meanwhile, you're dealing with all these minions that keep rushing your position with shotguns or submachine guns that can easily drop your health too. So it gets pretty tense and uh, frenetic at some points, and those guys piss me off. The other ones that piss me off the most though are, they're a standard, normal, small bad guy enemy type, uh, but they have these rocket launchers that are similar to yours, in fact almost the same, the difference is that your rockets don't really track that much, and these guys can go around corners with their shots. It is incredibly cheap, I think if they were to patch the game to do anything, one of the first things they should do is decrease the amount of tracking those, those rockets can do. I can't tell you how many times I have dodged out at the perfect moment and still been hit by those bastards because they'll bank a corner or they'll turn almost 90 degrees to just hit me dead on. They're incredibly frustrating to fight. But that being said, you know, sometimes the, ga it, the game is about thinking about your tactics mostly and uh, quite a bit of skill as well. So while your skills may be up to the task, maybe you need to go back and look at some of the points you've been spending on your abilities. One thing I was trying to do towards the three quarter mark, maybe even a little bit further, was hoard my uh, upgrade points because I thought, oh, maybe what if there's a really tough boss and I want to put in the upgrades there? Or what if you know I invest in the wrong skill because it costs a lot to reset your points? And I was having trouble with this fight and I just could not get through it. I realized that as soon as I upgraded the damage out, all I had to do was upgrade it by one level, the damage output to my launch ability, and I upgraded my energy pool one level. All of a sudden I was dominating the fight. I could not be touched. I was taking, and so the upgrade and progression system in the game is very impactful. It does remind me of games that I really like with great progressions like System Shock 2, where just a single skill point dumped into a skill is enough to radically change the nature of the gameplay and change how you feel in combat scenarios or engagements. So, yes, keep an eye on your upgrades, keep an eye on what what's happening, and if the fight still seems too tough, I would say make sure you're checking your 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 build and make sure you know you're investing those points wisely and you know, even just an investment of one or two points into your character build could mean the difference between having an easy time with the fight and being totally um, screwed and the reason I wasn't investing too many in some of my skills was in most games you know the in incremental increase in damage or whatever is not usually felt very well in the gameplay or in the game world but in control it totally is so I definitely got frustrated at a couple points in control but it is the kind of game where it is challenging it's, I'm not gonna say it's not difficult it is difficult but once again it's one of those games where if you're getting stuck, you need to reevaluate your tactics. Because I would honestly say for most players, if you're getting to any of the points in the game where you're getting stuck, your skill level is probably high enough to do what is required of you to finish the game. So I think you just re need to reassess your tactics, reassess your strategy. The one thing I would say, though, is that Remedy has this sort of dichotomy with this game, and I've heard that from other reviewers that this is a problem that they just have as a, as a, as a developer. There's two different games awkwardly smashed together here. There is a, a really sort of thoughtful, investigative, uh, exploration-based, you know, horror sci-fi game here where you're dealing with a lot of creepy stuff and you're dealing with all this creepy subject matter and you have to read, like, tons and tons of emails and listen to all these audio logs and watch all these like live action movies and stuff like that to get a sense of what's going on and to really enjoy the the atmosphere and enjoy the plot and enjoy the horror of the game so there's that game and you're exploring this sort of 
immaculately uh, constructed uh, facility that just looks beautiful from an aesthetic and level design standpoint and is all and, and is also very uh, strange and creepy and all you want to do is just explore and see what what you know mysteries lie inside of the facility and figure out what's going on and learn more about the plot and learn more about everything and that is awkwardly sm smushed together between a fairly challenging third-person shooter that requires a lot of tactics, strategy, on-the-fly thinking, and utilization of all the abilities that they give you, including all the weapons. And in, a, in an addition to uh, upgrading Jesse, you can also upgrade your weapons. You can upgrade, you know, damage, you know, ammo count, uh, weapon spread, things like that. So, yeah, you're constantly having to balance your character build. You're constantly having to balance your weapons that you're using in combat, your weapons uh, attachments and upgrades, all of these things in this very sort of fast-paced tactical shooter that is either extremely fun and you feel like you feel like a Jedi, you know, like throwing people in the air and blowing shit up and like grabbing, you know, chunks of concrete all out of walls and throwing that at them. Or you feel like a scared little bunny afraid to move from your position because every time you do, you get absolutely pelted with fire and killed immediately. So the shooting is extremely challenging and it actually, in my opinion, it discourages exploration because the game world and the subject matter is something that is really, really, really interesting to explore and take in and, and uh, you know, uncover all the mysteries to it. And yet, every time you walk into a room, there is some new giant fucking firefight. This loud, obnoxious, bombastic firefight that goes on forever and, you know, even when you're at the late game and you're totally overpowered, you're still probably going to get killed if you make one wrong step. So... I think the two games styles are juxtaposed to each other and I was I felt personally discouraged from exploring more of the facility and seeing more stuff because I kept getting tired of getting my ass kicked in combat or I kept getting tired of feeling like I just barely made it through that encounter when all I wanted to do was go see the trash can of death or whatever in the containment facility. I mean it felt like a mini boss fight every, every time I wanted to move from one room to the next and it just got exhausting and really discouraging so I said you know what I'm not gonna mess with this anymore. And so, at the end of the game, uh, they give you the option to undertake a lot of the side quests. I had done most of the side quests in the game, except for the boss fight. Most of the side quest story threads culminate in a, a boss fight, and most of them are difficult than the main plotline boss fights. They're expecting you to be even more overleveled at that point. And uh, partly because I rented the game, but also because I was just getting tired of not... You know, because there, there, there was very few points in the game where I felt comfortable going out into combat. It was always tense, it was always, you know, edge of your seat, uh, edge of your fingernails, like, just too much. So, that's what I would say is my main issue with the game, because I didn't get to explore enough of the facility or, or uncover as many of the mysteries as I wanted to, because I felt totally discouraged by this sort of overly difficult uh, gameplay system. That being said, I think Control is a really fun game. I think if any of what I've said sounds interesting to you, you should check it out. I have purposely not touched on the plot too much because there are a lot of spoilers just even in the first hour of Control. Things you're going to want to experience for yourself for the first time. So I don't want to spoil anything. I gave you the just the basic setup and I've talked about some of the, the, the gameplay. I think when it works gameplay wise it's incredibly fun because all of the powers are really cool and the firefights are just as intense as fears and they're just as cool to partake in and the launch ability it's kind of like a rebirth of the gravity gun i gotta say this this is this is both a a pointer to players of the game that will make their experience a lot easier in addition to a comment on the quality of the game you know how good it is i wasn't using launch a lot and towards about that until about the halfway point of the game because I was using it improperly. I was using it like the gravity gun in Half-Life. And the way the gravity gun in Half-Life works is if you want to suck up an object to then launch at someone, you have to wait for it to come to the gravity gun and be quote unquote sucked up before you can launch it. And that's what I was doing. And the thing that sucks is it takes a long time to grab things sometimes because you don't have a ton of control over what Jesse grabs. She grabs the easiest or closest thing, quote unquote, to grab for her. 
But this could, you know, this the game calculates this through a number of different variables. So sometimes you'll be standing out there with your thumb up your butt in the middle of combat, being pelted with fire, waiting for some stupid uh, fire extinguisher to reach your hand so you can launch it. That's not how the game works, all right? Things do damage coming to you just as much as they do damage going away from you. So that's another thing, too. Try and grab objects behind your enemies because it will hit them on the way to getting to you. In addition to that, Jesse's targeting reticle, when it's pointed at an enemy, will turn into a diamond shape whenever an object is ready to be launched. So even if the object is 40 feet away from your hand, you can still launch it at that person because she doesn't, it's not like a pick up and throw thing. It's more of like a psychokinetic control over the object that where Jesse is telling it where she wants to go, it to go. So keep that in mind. Constantly put your targeting reticle on what you want it to hit. As soon as you see that little diamond shape pop up, bam, pelt him with it. And you'll actually get a lot more bang for your buck because you'll be, you know, for every one launch you would perform in, with the, the incorrect method, you could do three, maybe four launches with the other method. And then launch becomes just unstoppable. It is really, really an excellent ability in the game. The levitation, the way it works, is really cool too because you do just kind of hover there and you can sort of control where you're going, but you have complete control over your weapons and even launch while you're doing this. And it doesn't drain from your energy pool. It just has a cool down timer. So it'll cool down and then you'll drop to the ground, but as soon as it, 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 the cool down is only, uh, only affects how long she can stay in the air because as soon as your feet touch the ground, you can, you can levitate immediately again. So it didn't really fit my play style because I was playing with a controller and I didn't have that sort of tight control over it that I would have with a mouse and keyboard. But had I been on a mouse and keyboard, I probably would have been using Levitate a lot more because the enemy AI just isn't as good at fighting you when you're in the air. Those rocket guys can still do some damage to you, but I noticed I was getting hit far less levitating in the air by the rocket attacks than I was on the ground. So, and as I said, it worked perfectly with those grenade launcher guys it's almost as if the developers wanted me to play with Levitate in that battle arena and made it artificially completely one-sided the engagement if I were to be on the ground versus if I were to be on the air. Huh, go figure. So, yeah. Control is a really interesting game with some uh, really beautiful visuals and it's just, if you're into that sort of creepy, you know, Lovecraftian sci-fi, if anyone has seen the movie The Void, that sort of like John Carpenter-esque uh, Lovecraftian movie that came out a little while ago. This is very reminiscent of The Void. And there's a lot of imagery that's shared, including like upside down black pyramids and all this crazy stuff like that. So um, if you're into that, if you uh, are into anything from the SCP threads, you know, all of the sort of like fake, uh, you know, possessed item stories and stuff like that from those threads. Um, if anything I've said about the plot, you know, uh, is interesting to you at all, or in, in watching this review, if you've seen any gameplay or any visuals that just um, intrigue you, I would definitely suggest checking out this game. Oh, and it has to be said, uh, yeah, the horror stuff does get dropped in the game, like I said, but there's one section where this totally works. There's a section where you go through this, it's this like hotel looking thing right and it's con like the walls and the roof and the doors and everything is constantly changing around you and at this point in the game you have all your abilities and so they start playing this awesome song where you're just levitating and gliding through these like huge like cavernous environments but all you know put together with like hotel 1960s hotel themed wallpaper and the, the walls are shifting and the ceiling is turning into something else and the hallways are rotating around you like inception style and it is just a barrel of fun and i think it was great because the music got me pumped and because the level keeps changing it kind of kicked my mind into like overdrive gear a little bit and i was playing a lot better meaning that my actions were matching the song, so the music had me pumped and the fact that I had to be very, very on point listening to what, or, or keeping track of what's going on on the level, I couldn't get complacent at all. And it allowed me to play much better, and so I was actually hitting the action in the gameplay with the beats of the music, even though it's not a Mick Gordon sort of um, reactive type soundtrack, it was just a single song played. I was still hitting it with the right beats and I wasn't getting stuck even on really tough encounters. So that was just an awesome, visually it was a feast, gameplay wise it was super fun. 
I wouldn't say Control is super groundbreaking, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I, I was a bit disappointed in the explanation for some things, and I was a bit disappointed that a lot of the sort of horror was dropped, but it is its own thing, and it has its own tone, and it doesn't necessarily want to be just a horror game. It's, you know, like I said, it is more akin to a sort of blacker, darker men in black to some extent. But I really had a great time with it, and so I, I would absolutely recommend um, Control, both from a gameplay side and a world building and lore side. I really enjoyed it. Um, although I will say I wish there was a difficulty slider or I wish there was a different save system. I think if you could save anywhere you want, yeah, I wouldn't have had any issues with the game and I would have definitely 100%ed it. I would have done all the side quests and everything. But being as it is with that weird checkpoint save system and you have to like, you know, because there's one boss fight in particular and everyone on the forums bitches about this. If you, It's a really tough boss fight. And if you die, not only do you have to restart all of the dialogue and all of the everything and all of the loading screens just to get back to the boss fight and all of the the cutscenes and stuff but you also have to respawn uh very far away from the boss it probably takes like a good two two and a half minutes just to make it to the boss again and then in addition to that there is a big fight on the way to the boss and it actually can be kind of tough if you're just trying to get past it and go to the boss again you can run past it but you're probably going to take some damage and you don't want to be missing any hp going into the boss so it's like that checkpoint save system just completely killed my desire to because even with the random enemies popping up here and there when you're just trying to explore if i could save wherever i wanted to at least i could be done with the encounter and then say okay well this room's probably going to remain clear for a while i can look around one final point i would say about the combat that pissed me off which is why i think there should either be an overall to the save overhaul to the save system or or at least allow difficulty selection is that during a lot of combat encounters this really is cheap and it pisses me off they spawn enemies behind you all the time because the enemies just teleport in and i hate games like that it only worked in half-life because there were very few enemies that could just completely decimate your health bar in one hit that would pop behind you and they moved a little bit slower but in this game it's really really unfair they'll spawn enemies behind you all the time so you constantly have to be watching your ass it gets a little annoying and a little cheap sometimes too and also there's this other thing uh enemy ai has a tendency to if they're the last man standing to hide and your health may be low, but you may be thinking, is the fight over? I don't see anybody. And you'll start running around the map just looking for the last guy to kill. And he'll be hiding out with some sort of devastating attack. I can't tell you how many times I got killed thinking I had gotten every last one of them. And then he popped out, and bam. After going through probably a three-minute fight that was pretty intense. Just get killed by some little guy who, you know... I understand it's realistic, but I'm not playing a game where I can levitate, you know, 15 feet off the ground and a gun that changes into anything I want it to be, and being able to rip, you know, chunks of concrete out of the wall with my mind and throw them at people across the room. I'm not playing that kind of game for realism, so just make it easier on the player, and if he's the last man standing, have him come out and just at least shoot at me. Just let me know where you are so I can come up with a plan of attack. So, you know, it's a healthy challenge. Um, I definitely felt accomplished after finishing it, but there were points where I was thinking, eh, this doesn't need to be this hard. And also, like I said, because the combat can be very challenging, it discourages some of the exploration. But these aren't these detractors are not, not enough to make it a bad game in my book. So I really did like it. I hope Remedy sort of figures out a formula, you know. Uh, I thought one thing that might help is towards the end of the game, because at the end of the game, they're saying, oh, you have to clear the rest of the infestation out of the building. So it's like, well, how about this? At the end of the game, when I'm doing side quests, why don't you allow me to officially clear areas so enemies won't respawn there, you know? Or leave, like, a finite number of hiss at the end of the game. Um, th those would be... So there's a lot of solutions that Remedy could put in to make the game less... Ob it is obnoxious in places. It does get under your skin with some of the poor design choices. But, one, you know, once again, I have to say, overall... These do not detract enough from the game to make it a bad experience, and I would definitely recommend Control. Would I say there's sufficient replay value? 
If yeah, I, I'd say if you finish the game and then maybe like six months later you're like, oh, that was pretty fun. I might want to play it again. There might be. I think there might be a new game plus as well that could add something to it. Um, but the story beats are all going to be the same, and if you've done all the side quests, those are all going to be the same. So. Yes and no, it really depends. If you really loved the experience, I'm sure you'd love playing through it again. The combat is freeform enough to make it never really feel the same twice because you're always going to be, you know, doing things in a different way or you might go with a different build because of the progression system. But it's also not as if it has just inherent tons of replay value. Um, and I'd say for 60 bucks, me personally, I would find it a little expensive. The cam campaign's only like 8 to 10 hours. It's not a very long game. And with the side quests, that could add some. Now, they, there is a bunch of DLC coming, I, I think, because the end of the game doesn't really feel like an end to the game. And then there's like, because there's so many side quests, there's still tons of stuff to do. So they're definitely setting it up for a sequel, and there are tons of things to do at the end of the game. So there may be DLC coming to make it more worthwhile. But as of right now, it's about a 10-hour campaign, maybe 15 if you do all the DLC. But it's a full $60 title. I think if I had a ton of money uh, I wouldn't mind paying 30 for it for sure I mean it shows an incredible degree of polish and it's super fun and it's kind of a technical marvel as well with all the physics objects and the, the visual effects during combat and you know the how you you can use your powers pretty much anywhere in any combat arena um, things like that It's so yeah I'd pay $30 for it but I think 60 is kind of expensive for what you're getting Oh, as a quick aside, speaking about performance on the consoles, I did play this on Xbox One. I know when it first launched that because it was so processor intensive and technically complex that it was running fine on like Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, but on the base systems, it was like the frame rate was dropping to like, you know, single digits sometimes during intense firefights. I would not see this game had a really consistent frame rate but i'm just saying that the drops were not frequent or very detrimental you know i think the, i did hit one point where maybe i got like 15 frames a second but typically if it dropped it'd be like from 30 to 24 30 to 23 something like that you know not quite as low as 20 but not you know 30 obviously not 30 and that only happened in like if I was blowing everything, like just explosions, particle effects, uh, visual uh, effects, because every time you use your powers, there's, these, there's all these like distorted visual effects and things like that. It only happened one time where I really tanked it low, and the rest of the time it would tank maybe five to seven frames a second, which is noticeable, but it didn't really affect gameplay substantially. I will say this, you know, compared to the graphics I've seen on other systems, there are some visual rough spots on the xbox version but the xbox one is a completely underpowered anemic system so i kind of understand it but actually considering the track record this game had when it first launched in terms of performance and visuals i gotta say i thought it looked great and it played fine i never had any significant performance issues so that's just a quick aside at least my experience with the xbox one version and by the way i'm not even running it on an s i'm running it on the original og xbox one just the old school black brick that they came out with a long time ago. Because I know the S, pro, uh, my friend has it on the S, his handles it just slightly better. I don't think he has as many frame dips um, as I do. Um, but performance was fine, so that was just one more aside. So uh, check out Control, and I hope this review is helpful, and I, I hope uh, I encouraged uh, some of you to go check it out and see if it's uh, something you'd be interested in.